Well, so a big part of this is that China does not sort of have the oil reserves that the United States does. That, that's right. I, I, not even, not even close. Yeah. They have to go abroad. You mentioned that China has doubled their intake of Iranian oil in the last 14 months. Is that a demand issue that they need a lot more oil now, or are they rebalancing where they get their oil from? That's a really good question. So what I can say is it's not the latter. Uh, at least, I mean, that, that might be come up just because it does, but that, that's not the driver. I, I think it's about, again, seeing what they can get away with. Right. This also, the, the more China is able to import, it also drives down prices for them. First of all, they still need to acquire more sources of energy as a hedge. Right. The U.S. has been trying to get our regional partners to not sign long term commitments with the CCP. And the CCP has to be worried, uh, although, you know, frankly, they don't have to worry about this uh, as much as. I might like them to, but still thinking long term, the responsible thing for them is to say, well, what are sources of oil or natural gas? I'm just sort of conflating the two, but I think for our purposes that that works. Um, what are sources that the U.S. can't mess with? Like Iran is not going to be responsive or receptive to just a U.S. nice request for them to not do this, right? And so. By building up this relationship and um, importing more and more, and you know it's it's a significant increase, but in terms of China's total needs, it's not a huge percentage yet. Um, but I think that they've been doing this gradually again to see what they can, to see how it works, and it might be working for China actually a lot more than it's working for Iran, and so I don't think we're going to see this trajectory continue. And that's not through any sort of, you know, marvelous policy decision by the United States or anyone else. It's just a function of the internal dynamics in Iran and the broader Iran-China relationship. Well, I wonder if there's anything more to it than just the oil, because as you mentioned earlier, there are other sources of oil besides Iran. Uh, I know earlier this year, uh, Xi Jinping invited the leader of Iran uh, to China. Is, is there something else going on in the relationship besides just oil and the source of oil that the United States essentially can't touch? Oh, well, for sure. I mean, I think all of these things are interconnected. But what you also have going on in general in the Persian Gulf region, in the broader Middle East as well, or the MENA region, but especially in the Persian Gulf, you have had over the last um, three U.S. administrations, uh, inclusive of the current, um, U.S. presidents who have talked about um, U.S. pulling back from this region and, you know, and pivoting to Asia or whatever you want to say. Now, I think that most of that has been all talk, although I do think that some of the desire is genuine. But we haven't actually done that much. But I do think that the CCP sees a potential opening there, I, I think correctly, sees a potential opening there whereby the U.S. pulls back either in a physical sense, in an investment sense, in a political capital sense, and they are much better placed than Russia is to fill in that gap. I don't think that they are at the point where they could fully replace the U.S. in the region even just from a you know maritime security sense. Uh, I'm not even sure, frankly, they would even want to do that yet. But you do have, I think, a broader competition in this region that sort of is an undercurrent of a lot of different diplomatic maneuvering and commercial maneuvering um, between the U.S. and China. Do you think that what China... What does the CCP kind of envision when they think of replacing the U.S. in the region? Are they thinking mostly economically, or are they thinking that politically they want to become more of an influence in the Middle East? Because the U.S. has been pretty enmeshed in that region for decades now. Um, but like the, some of the, I guess, conventional wisdom about China or the CCP is that they wouldn't want to get involved 
in like the local politics of the Middle East, like that they would just be interested in making money off the Middle East. Is that true in your in your point of view? Yeah, I think that that is actually largely true, but I would add a, a third factor. So if we let's um, kind of zoom in as we go, I think on the, the economic factor, that is absolutely the sort of step one. I mean, they definitely have been encouraging investment from every state in the region, right? And that's an almost uniquely, you know, it, it's, they're one of the few countries I think that, that can do that, you know, to try to encourage investment from and in you know, Iran, the GCC, Israel, right? Every country in the region, they are making this sort of play in different ways. Um, and I think that for a long time, up until really just a few years ago, they were pretty content with that, or at least were establishing a, a foothold in that way. I think that what they, the shift has been, it's not really a shift, but they've added in a sort of interest in regional politics, re regional politics between states, right? We've seen them take a role in negotiating uh, normalization between Iran and Saudi Arabia, it, that, that probably most prominently that, so they don't have taken an interest in some of the politics of the region. What they still have tried to avoid, and I think that probably in the long run is going to be difficult for them to avoid, and, and, and we already see this, I think, especially in Iran, is being involved in the local politics. They have absolutely tried to stay out of it, right? That's, that's been their thing. I think it's fairly well known. The Syrian civil war is really the most, um, the best example of this. Right at one point in that war, there were over 50 different named armed groups backed by different combinations of states. None of those states was China. Right? Like China did not back any of those actors in this little sort of miniature world war. And the reason for that, and the reason why they appointed a special envoy for Syria, was that they would be the one state that didn't upset anybody. They weren't fighting anybody. They didn't back anyone that anyone hated. And thus, no matter what happened or will happen, since that war is a lot smaller, fewer players, but it's still ongoing, they would be in the best place to essentially rebuild Syria afterward. Um, and so they sort of stayed out of that. But that's becoming, I think, more and more difficult. And I think part of that uh, it's just sort of the nature of politics in general. As their investments increase, as their interests in the region increase, they can't really entirely avoid it. Um, and it, it could just be that it coincides with my own um, expertise. But in, in Iran, you see how it's the domestic politics that is, I think, the greatest obstacle to a, a much closer relationship between those two much more than anything the U.S. could do. So on the domestic politics front, so uh, how is this massive like oil for Chinese manufactured goods trade uh, affecting locals and local politics in Iran? So this is what's, what's sort of interesting. And if you think about it, it, it shouldn't really have taken anyone by surprise. And yet it seems to have taken um, Tehran a bit by surprise. So the impact, as, as one might expect, you have a flood of cheap Chinese goods coming in to Iran and driving down the price of local manufacturing and putting domestic producers out of business. And that's impactful anywhere, right? We, this, is a, a, this comes up in U.S. politics. But Iran especially, because of the longevity of U.S. and international sanctions, it has promoted right, the resistance economy which essentially is government policies that promote domestic arms manufacturing, domestic heavy machinery manufacturing, all types of domestic manufacturing, you know, from computer products to whatever, because they couldn't get those products in the open market. Well, so now you have a society that has a lot of domestic producers, um, people working on assembly lines, things like that. And now you have this flood of cheap Chinese goods coming in, and it drives them out of business. And now you have a whole lot of people out of work. And they might not be anti-regime, right? The U.S. has this uh, tendency to underestimate regime support among all of our adversaries. 
That's not to say that it's super high. I just think we underestimate it. And this is something that even supporters of the Islamic Republic are affected by and have, in fact, taken to the streets over. Right? You've had street protests over the years, anti-Chinese street protests, where you have people holding signs that say, Supreme Leader, don't sell us to China, don't give our jobs to China, um, slogans like that. And because it is not easily painted as sort of the work of the US, as the work of Israel, that there's some nefarious force behind these protests, it's been a bit hard for the regime to ignore. And I think they're still trying to figure out how they can encourage the relationship between Beijing and Tehran without upsetting their own base of political support. You know, I wonder if this is part of the reason why the U.S. hasn't uh, been too strict about China kind of violating the spirit of these sanctions, because they see it as potentially being destabilizing for the Iranian regime. I think that is a, a very good observation. I don't, I'm not in a position to know that that is what our intent is with certainty, but it certainly is a benefit. I think the question will be for the U.S. is, at what point, if any, does the economic benefit that either side might accrue or on the Iranian side in terms of, of weapons and things like that, at what point might that outweigh the domestic unrest that this relationship might cause? And we're not there yet. Maybe we'll never get there. But, but that is something I think that I'm quite sure um, people in, in Washington pay attention to.